Melissa Lee. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's a great um, 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 pleasure to rise to take a, a third reading call on the estimates debate for 2016, sir. And uh, I was actually going to mention to the member who just sat down that uh, um, normally people say you had me at something, you lost me at the Auckland housing crisis. I thought he was actually going to blame me, the person with a Chinese sounding surname, for singularly responsible for the rise in Auckland house prices. Um, again, but um, I, I, I thought, you know, um, um, he, he didn't quite go there. He did actually sort of talk about the issues. And I think one of the great things that this government has actually done, sir, is to help the average Kiwi improve their situation by improving their salaries. And I think the median wage has actually gone, gone up to $63,000 a year, uh, up to 2000, uh, 2020. That's, that's actually what we're going to be doing. I mean, that's $16,000 increase than what we actually came to uh, govern in 2008, sir. And I think, you know, when you look at uh, what Phil, uh, Phil Twyford, Mr. Twyford was actually talking about in terms of house affordability and housing issue, is that when we have a low interest rate that people can actually get a cheap mortgage, it's an opportunity that average Kiwi can own their own homes. I remember, you know, um, some years ago when the mortgage interest rate was well in it, you know, double figures. And even then, you know, we were thinking about uh, buying, uh, um, dreaming about buying our own home, that piece quarter acre section, to actually own our own villas or, or townhouses. And uh, I remember a long time ago when somebody actually told me, gave me big advice actually, that I should buy a home in Queenstown. Uh, and the price was $30,000, some years ago, obviously. And I thought, what? Queenstown, $30,000? Um, I could probably afford that, a huge interest rates back then, and I thought, but the flights to Queenstown were absolutely astronomical, and I thought, who would actually go and live in Queenstown? And uh, a few years ago, that $30,000 home actually sold for $3 million. So it's actually not just Auckland that's actually have got the, you know, in in increasing housing prices. It's, it's what's called advancement. You know, people, uh, e even... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Todd, uh, for contributing there. But it's about, it's about modernization of cities. I mean, global cities around the world have housing issues. And, you know, this is also an issue of people who are wanting to come back to this country. You know, we used to have uh, a problem with New Zealanders who didn't want to live in New Zealand. They wanted to go across the ditch or overseas because life was so okay. difficult I'll in New Zealand. Now, now we have people wanting to move back that. because yeah. New Zealand is such a great country, sir. And I think it's, so, it's, it's mm -hmm. about us celebrating. We so, should be celebrating yeah. the success and success of people thinking that New Zealand is doing great. We also have, you know, we, we need to build more houses. We do actually admit that, and we are doing that. And you know, considering the fact that this government is actually building more houses than that uh, Labour government, previous uh, Labour government ever did, uh, is a testament, sir. So, during the previous debate on the estimates, and I have to say that I have particularly enjoyed the debates of the ministers and my colleagues um, uh, from this side of the house, particularly, and uh, I did not have time to raise the great work that Minister Joyce um, um, has been uh, doing to support rural economic growth across New Zealand, sir. Um, his work as part of the business growth agenda has been helping to revitalize job growth and better infrastructure around our regions. Uh, the regional program that the minister and MB have been uh, working on are great. Uh, just a few days ago, at the start of this month, my colleague from Kaikoura, uh, Stuart Smith, and I uh, met with a group of rural Korean students who are studying in different uh, New Zealand um, regions as part of an Education New Zealand uh, joint initiative with the South Korean government educational enterprises as part of the FTA that was actually um, um, uh, struck up uh, between Korea and New Zealand. And, um, you know, and the wider 
the, the fact that they're here, there's about 150 students here, and they're given the opportunity to experience New Zealand's rural lifestyle. Because in, in Korea, the rural lifestyle is actually very different. And uh, the fact that we're actually giving them an opportunity to actually learn from New Zealand, and they will take their experience back to Korea, is, is something that we're actually uh, providing an opportunity for, uh, for Korea as part of the FTA, that it's actually not just about trade, it's not just about the dollar signs or selling our products, but we are also having people-to-people uh, -people contact. And the fact that those students are living in Kiwi homes as homestays, they're actually also providing Korean culture and Korean etiquette and the things that they actually bring with them to the Kiwi families that they actually encounter as well, sir. Uh, talking about those kinds of encounters, I think I have to actually talk about the success of the tourism industry. Tourism industry is actually thriving in this country, sir. And I know that my colleague Jonathan Young actually talked about, you know, people that he have actually met and how, how wonderful that they, uh, they had high regard for uh, New Zealand. And I have to actually also espouse the same experience when I was actually uh, recently when I took my son back to uh, Korea and when they hear about uh, the fact that we're from New Zealand they have this dreamy eyes and apparently New Zealand is the dream uh, location for their holiday plans and especially with the uh, issues of um, uh, threats of ter terrorism um, in Europe and also recently in Asia uh, terrible things and people are frightened and they look to New Zealand as a safe place for them to travel and such wonderful um, environment that they can actually experience nature uh, talking about great rides in terms of you know um, the um, great walks and also uh, uh, the ability to actually ride their bicycles as well, sir. Um, there are more hotel rooms being booked, over 88,000 more visitors from China alone visiting our country, more funding being made available for medium-sized tourism ventures, such as the world-class cycle trials um, um, all over our country, 25 million in additional funding uh, over the next four years to help, um, help those uh, cycle trails deliver a world-class experience and other similar projects supported by this government are helping support local uh, businesses, uh, local economies, and grow New Zealand's economy as a whole, sir. Uh, the government also invested an extra 37 million to upgrade infrastructure that is um, underpinning and supporting growth in the tourism sector. Part of this funding is to help regional mid-sized facilities through a new fund that will help them uh, to be able to enhance visitor opportunities to enjoy our our nation and grow the number of tourists, both local and international, visiting all parts of our great country. Uh, supporting our tourism industry supports community well-being, sir. It helps communities to grow in a healthy way, where jobs create uh, more, uh, more houses, more local industries, and, uh, result, um, um, and also offer new opportunity to those people who, who live in those regions as well, sir. Uh, a strong plan uh, supporting the tourism industry in rural communities is a great initiative by this government and one I'm happy to uh, support. And um, um, just on Saturday, I was able to travel uh, up to Whangarei to assist, well, well, to actually meet with my Korean community, but, and I was accompanied by the wonderful MP from Whangarei, uh, Dr. Shane Ritty. And one of the comments that the uh, Korean community actually talked about was the wish to actually have more visitors uh, come up to Whangarei as well, so they can grow their businesses. And I think tourism is something that we should, uh, we should actually encourage in all fields and um, encourage more infrastructure to be actually built in those um, um, uh, regional cities as well, and I totally support that. And uh, one of the things that I actually talked about with those Korean community up in Whangarei was about the ideas and views um, of them about you know, how this government is actually working and what they would actually perhaps like to see. And one of the things that they talked about was the new, initi new initiative in terms of a provisional tax. Um, um, you know, provisional tax um, has been a large burden on small businesses, and they thought that that was actually a great job that this government was actually doing to introduce a, a, a way to reduce a burden for small businesses, and that they actually congratulated me on the job well done. So I shall pass that on to uh, the minister um, um, who is actually introducing that. Um, the government's fiscal priority have been a, uh, to maintain rising surpluses and reduce net debt in this country, sir. And I think this national government has actually delivered that. Uh, um, 
and, uh, and hope that uh, we can actually uh, reduce uh, debt to 20% of GDP by 2020 and work to reduce taxes and overall help Kiwi families and businesses get ahead. And uh, I think, um, hence, I think uh, we are in good heart and I commend this bill to the House. Thank you. I call Fletcher Tabatow.